system does not provide for asset accounts, neither does it provide for methods of system. It was on a cold Thursday afternoon on 19th June 1997. As usual, an anxious and expectant country sat waiting for the presentation of the country's budget for the 1997-1998 financial year. All eyes and ears were on one weekly from Saliam Davadi, then Minister for Finance. It was uh, one hell of a challenge because um, the clamor for a new constitution uh, had gained momentum and uh, it was clear that the whole issue of uh, removing section 2a was not enough people wanted more and they wanted uh, a new constitution so um, they as the opposition they tried to figure out where would they get maximum attention uh, in presenting uh, their case um, and uh, they happened to pick on the budget presentation day. This is where Finance Minister Msaliam Davadi stood as he presented the government's budget policy statement. Right in front of him was a hostile Michael Wamalo led opposition whose mission to scuttle the budget presentation was irresolute. On his left was a furious speaker, Francis Caparo, and then revered President Daniel Arap Moy, who sat and watched pensively as the events unfolded. This is KTN's Untold Story, the 1997 Budget Kills. My name is Duncan Haimba. By 1997, Kenya's opposition was still smarting from the bruising 1992 defeat by Kanu. Many of the leaders then believed that only a new constitution would guarantee a free and fair election. With only six months to the next election, the opposition saw the budget as the perfect opportunity to get the world's attention. By 2.30 p.m., members of parliament had availed themselves in the chambers in readiness for the budget reading. But the stage was instead set for a fierce contest that would put the House in the national spotlight. Members of parliament from both sides of the House, the government and the opposition, could be seen taunting each other even before the proceedings began. Battle lines had been drawn. The opposition had vowed to disrupt the budget by all means necessary. The die had been cast. Finance Minister Msaliam Davadi had just left State House for Parliament. Routine was that the Finance Minister would first go to State House and present budget details to the Cabinet. And once that had been done, he would leave straight to Parliament to read the estimates. The move was to ensure no leakages of the details ever took place. Mdavadi had just done that. When I got to Parliament, you could literally feel there was a problem, you know. And you walk in and uh, as you move around, people are looking at you as if... Um, as if they know something about you, or something is about to happen to you, but they don't really want to tell you what it is that they want to, to execute against you. And this is the one occasion when, uh, you, you, as a Minister for Finance, you walk in with some, some pomp uh, and ceremony in, uh, on a budget day. So when I walked in, it was quite okay. It was not too bad, but uh, there was the applause from the government side, but there were jeers uh, from the other side, and of course some people pointing fingers at you. 
more shock was to follow immediately when parliamentary orderlies yelled to announce the speaker's arrival. They announced that the speaker was coming and uh, the president, you know, the normal routine. Uh, again, uh, whereas we would stand to allow that ceremony to take place, uh, the opposition side refused uh, to stand and they started jeering. Perhaps unknown to the government side, the then opposition had earlier that morning called a meeting to strategize on how to scuttle the budget reading that afternoon since the Kano regime had refused to heed to their demands of having constitutional reforms. We met and uh, agreed uh, to look for constitutional and legal reasons why the budget could not be read. Uh, at that time, we had the leadership of the opposition in the, in the House consisted of uh, um, uh, Michael Wamalo Kijana, Mwai Kibaki, and uh, Martin Shikuku. There was a summit uh, in which they used to meet as leaders of the opposition in, in Parliament. However, there was a problem. None of the key opposition leaders, Michael Kijana Wamalwa, Martin Shikuku, and Mwai Kibaki was ready to lead the disruptions. Then DP party leader Mwai Kibaki declined. Next online was Firebrand Butere member of parliament, the late Martin Shikuku Omana Oyondi. It was proposed that uh, uh, if Kibaki couldn't, then Martin Shikuku should be the one because he was uh, uh, famous and, and, and noted for uh, uh, being a master of standing orders. Uh, so after, uh, again, a little debate, he said, no, 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 uh, we, uh, I, I will not be the right person because there are more fundamental legal and constitutional issues. Um, then uh, eventually, because at that time, Fort Kenya was the main opposition. Omalwa was the official leader of the opposition. So we said, okay, you should do it. Wamala also declined, uh, saying um, uh, because he's the official leader of the opposition, he cannot be seen to be inter interacting uh, at that level with, uh, with Mudavadi, who was basically a minister. That if it was an issue which had been raised by the president himself uh, in the chambers or, uh, or the vice president, then you would feel comfortable. So I was told to, to now confront uh, the presentation of the budget, uh, which I think I did quite effectively. As they laid down their plan, Parliament's security arm got wind of the matter. Some members of Lipotoko Kakatuambia, what they discussed in that meeting, Leo Hapa Mutaona. Moja, Mwishimiwa Cheboi, akatoa play card kwa mfuka mimi ya kanionyesha. Unaona hii? Ndiyo mutaona. Le mwoyi wenu mutaona na ye. Marehemu saidote ya kia makamu wa rais. Mimi, nikaene nikaambia my boss who was Michael Kiruswa. Tukaitana, tukapanga, tukaanza kupanga kwa chamber kama commandos. Vile tuta protect, protect president and the mess and the speaker. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know that there was any any, any plan to disrupt to, to the budget. As soon as the then House Speaker Francis Kausayo Lekaparo had called the House to order in readiness for the day's business, <laughs> drama began. Now, the moment I stood to start uh, the process of presenting the budget. Then the all hell broke loose. Akina Orengo, uh, the current senator for, for CIA, uh, people like the late uh, David Mwenje, uh, people like uh, Shikuku, people like uh, um, Nyanja. Uh, these guys just started pulling out placards. You know, they had rolled placards and walked in with them in their jackets. And they started having these uh, placards there. And 
they were now chanting, no reforms, no budget. No reforms, no budget. The man of the moment was the then revered Ugenya member of parliament, James Agri Boborengo, who rose on uncountable points of order to try and convince the speaker to adjourn the house. Kaparu gave me some latitude to, to say as much as I could, you know, uh, I, I, I rose on, on many issues, constitutional, uh, legal, and uh, matters to do with the standing order. Uh, the Honorable Member for Ugenya, James Orengo, was entitled to stand on a point of order as he did. And he was entitled to get uh, a response from the chair, which he did. But as the drama continued, the besieged finance minister thought of a strategy. For a moment, they would cool off. Uh, then I read again uh, a sentence or two, they create chaos. Uh, the speaker threw out some fellows, hoping that that will bring discipline into into the whole proceedings. Uh, these guys uh, didn't agree. Um, then we reached a stage and the speaker said, just present, continue. So I was reading extremely fast. The government will review laws relating to the correction of accounts together with the institutional arrangements and consider the necessary modifications to make them more suitable to present needs and operations. This is necessary. And those guys were shouting and chanting. Then the events took a new twist when the opposition unleashed placards that had different versions presenting the same message, demand for reforms. As the head of state, then Daniel Toroi teacher Apmoi sat pensively and in dismay. Moi was in the house. Um, uh, Quiet, silent. He, he didn't have a, uh, a right to say anything. He was sitting next to the speaker and, and witnessed all this commotion. Um, uh, so th th that is one of the incidences in Parliament that uh, uh, I, 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 is of note uh, in building up, you know, courage. You know, some people feared. Sometimes there are things we were doing, not that we were going to succeed but uh, getting fear out of the people that the president can be, sit, be sitting there and you can be told in his face, you know, that, that it's time to go. Well, for me, the question of head of state didn't arise. Everybody was a member sitting there. And I happened to be the speaker. And uh, all obligation was on me. The honors was upon me to ensure that uh, there was... Uh, uh, proper conduct of business of the house. It doesn't matter who rose, it doesn't matter who sat, it doesn't matter who was present, it doesn't matter who went. Uh, I had a duty to execute, and I executed that duty with all the diligence I could master. The government front bench watched in shock as chaos continued. Then then Gishugu legislator Martha Karua too had her placard, which had a more daring message. My point of order is this, Mr. Speaker. I came here because I wanted to listen to the budget. The message has been given. Today is a sad, sad day for this country. No.
The House adjourned to discuss the market of the Constitution and the time of the Constitution. The House of National Reform is here and now. The more the speaker stood his ground, the more dramatic it got, and the more charged the opposition became. Was the speaker worried as chaos escalated? Never, 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 never. The worse it became, the stronger it became. And that is my attitude in every situation, even to date. The more difficult it is, the stronger I become. Uh, because uh, you just can't give up as a leader. I mean, it's unheard of. It's, it is terrible. As a leader, to abdicate, to think twice, to be afraid? No, 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 no. That's not the business of a leader. No. You must lead from the front, and you must show the metal which you are made of. 